Greeting of the day, I am Rajkumar Parishari and I love doing physics. Today I am here with the topic toppling of an object. We will also do the mathematical formulation for the same. You need to be till the end of the video. I do suggest to subscribe my channel to get notification in time. Friends, let us discuss the case of toppling of a cylinder. So whatever argument we develop over here, same argument, same logic will also be applicable irrespective of the shape and size of the object. Over here, you see a cylinder of radius R and height H. It is placed on a plane and horizontal surface, a surface which has sufficient friction. If you see carefully, the weight of the object that passes through the base of the cylinder. So this is the base. More accurately, the weight of the cylinder passes through the center of the base. So the object will remain stable forever. It will remain placed the way it is forever until otherwise external force or torques they applied. Now let's switch over to the next case. In this case, as you see, the object, the same cylinder, it has been tilted. See carefully, this is the original initial position of the cylinder. Now it has been tilted a bit. Now the object has been tilted a bit. You'll notice the weight of the object is still passes through the base of the cylinder. Is that right? It is still passing through the base of the cylinder. And hence, if this object is released, it has to fall back to its initial stage after few oscillations. Now, now, if you want, I can show you uh, this example over here. Here is a cylinder. You hold it like like this a bit, then release it. Now, as you release it, it falls back to its original state. So why this is happening? Why this is happening? So and the reason is very obvious that the vector representing the weight is still passes through the base of the cylinder. And that is why if you release it, if you release this cylinder from this position so it has to fall back to its original state the mathematics formulation why this happens so i'll discuss in a short while please wait now what do you do you tilt this cylinder a bit further now as you tilt i mean you will reach to a situation in which a vector representing the weight of the cylinder is along the line joining the edge of the cylinder to the center of the cylinder in this case I mean, if you release this cylinder very carefully, then you will notice that the cylinder will stay forever in the absence of external forces. And it's a very critical situation. In this situation, the cylinder will is on the verge of toppling. It's also likely it may fall back to its original state. Now next, if the cylinder is further rotated to this situation, you see the weight of the cylinder, the vector that represent weight of the cylinder now no longer passes through the base of the cylinder. And this is the situation. This is a situation when cylinder will topple. It will fall on the ground and will never be able to achieve its original state. So I hope you understand. So under what condition the cylinder or any object that topples the object topples provided the vector that that represent the weight if extended does not pass through the base of the object or the cylinder in this case then the object will topple i hope i have made clear under what condition the cylinder will topple what and the same argument is applicable irrespective the shape and size of the object now let us now develop mathematical formulation for toppling. So F is the force applied at an height H. So when we apply force at an height H, let's see that what really happens. So this cylinder, this cylinder acquires tendency to slip, not only, uh, not only require tendency to slip, but also it acquires tendency to rotate about this point. Let's say this point to be point A. Now, because this acquires tendency to slip and that is why that is why there should be uh, there should be a frictional force at this point of contact. Is that right? And 
and further because uh, it assumes uh, the tendency to rotate about point O, point A in fact, then, then what really happens, the normal reaction has shifted from this point to this point. So at this point, there also acts a normal reaction. So in fact, these are the two forces, these are the two contact forces acting at point N when we apply, when we apply force F at certain height H. So apart from this, and I see apart from this weight W is also acting. Now let's consider the torque. Let's consider the torque about point A because the cylinder has acquired tendency to rotate about point A. So the torque produced by force F will be, let's write over here, torque produced by force F that should be about O of course, about, about point A. So this is the point A and this should be equals to F into H. We are considering, we, we are considering torque about point A. So this frictional force and this normal reaction has, will not contribute to torque. So let's not talk about it. And further, this torque has a tendency to rotate the cylinder in clockwise sense. Now next part, this W, this W has tendency to rotate the cylinder in counterclockwise direction. Is that right? And let's also write the torque produced by torque produced by weight. And that should be equals to, that should be equals to W into a small r, W into r. In fact, r happens to be the radius of the cylinder as, as I have already spoken. Now this direction, the sense of this torque produced by the weight is in anti-clockwise direction. Now you see, as long as FH remains less than WR, so the torque in clockwise sense remains less than torque in anti-clockwise sense. This cylinder will always come back to initial state once this force is removed. And this is what has happened in this case. In the second case, once the force is removed, then what happens? This comes back to its original state. Is that right? Now you see, once FH becomes equal to or greater than WR. So the torque that rotates the system in clockwise becomes more than the torque that rotates in anti-clockwise sense, then what will happen? This system will topple about point A. So this becomes the condition for toppling. So the minimum force if you want to calculate that should ensure the toppling that should be given by F H equals to W into R and this F is F minimum. Is it right? So if you want to calculate the minimum force that should ensure toppling is equals to W R by H. Now you should also understand that this force very much depends upon H. So by changing value of H we can uh, we can change uh, uh, we, uh, if we change value of H so so amount of force that requires that also ch uh, should also change. If the value of H is increased, if H is increased, the force required should become, should be less to topple. Is that right? So um, if point of application is moved from this place to this place, so amount of force required to topple the same cylinder will be less and if the point of application is moved downward. So H will decrease as H decreases force required to topple will be more. Furthermore, let's assume that this force is applied at the base. If this force is applied at the base, then what should happen? In this case, H tends to zero. So, so this object, this cylinder will not topple at all. Is that right? So I hope you understand. So what is the mathematics? What is the logic behind the behind the toppling of an of an any ob object? So basically, this completes the discussion. But 
recently in uh, in this iit advance 2020 20 uh, we came across a new situation in this situation i would like to elaborate and uh, see what the situation was uh, we have a plank and within this plank a small hole a hole is drilled the radius of the hole is small r now a larger a football of radius capital r is placed over it placed over this hole is it right and the radius of this football is capital r and capital r happens to be greater than a small r so this football will not be able to pass through this small hole now what has been done is that one end of this plank is lifted up keeping the other end fixed if we see uh, from side this is how it should look like now you see over here weight w is passing through the base so this is sphere this is sphere will not be able to roll is it right now let's come to the another situation let's let's uh, and in the another situation this angle this angle uh, is increased the plank the, the plank is tilted further now as the uh, plank is tilted further so you will come to a situation in which this plank is passing through the edge of the cylinder if this weight passes through the edge of the cylinder so most people uh, they thought i mean the cylinder should start rolling down right from this condition is it right but it will not happen so if it is uh, if it is tilted further if it is tilted further so what will happen is that this is fair this football will start this, this uh, for a particular value of uh, for a particular value of this angle of elevation this football will start rolling about this point a a situation will arrive then when ao ao is perpendicular to this x y the plank and this will be the situation when uh, when this football will roll so and and if you calculate if you solve it so this angle is theta this angle is theta so the condition you will be able to obtain for rolling sin theta is equals to small r by capital r thank you so very much for being uh, throughout the video and uh, i wish that uh, you should uh, subscribe my channel so that you get notifications in time whenever i come with more and more interesting problems so thank you so very much once again god bless you